and welcome to episode 67 of Into the Podcast. I'm your host, Sam, and I'm joined each and every week by my best friend, Ryan Chitterden. That was cute. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it was lovely. Just refusing to call you co-host. I know, yeah, any any reason. <laughs> I thought if I call you best friend, you, you can't yell at me for calling you co-host. You've called me co-host. co-host for like the last three weeks and that's it. You've done really well today. You've done podcast stuff today. I, for the first time ever. Yeah, you set up a group chat. I did. You told Megan what to do. I suggested. <laughs> I came up with an idea for more social media because... You know, quite rightly, Megan tells us off because we don't really provide anything for social <laughs> media. Anything. We do so much stuff. We're always out and about doing weird and wonderful stuff and then never take pictures. I'm really bad for that, generally. Oh, I'm mate, not I someone don't. to take pictures. Or like, I'll take I'll take pictures, but never upload them. No, well, like, you see, I'm not a big picture taker. Pictures of my kid all over the place. Yeah. She walks to the left and I'm like, oh, she's not done that in a while. Let's take a picture. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, other stuff, I don't think about it. I don't I don't know whether it's the fact that I'm just in the moment or I just don't think I'm not part of that generation, really. Yeah, maybe. I'm trying my I'm trying to move away from taking pictures at things like gigs to do stuff like that, to be in the moment. Yeah. Because more and more I find it's like you're just trying to capture you're just trying to capture something. Get these pictures of like a gig or a moment or a moment in time where you're never gonna watch it back. No, really, video of all the pictures not, or no. whatever. But like you know, so maybe right now try and get the odd one or two just to, that's it. Just to yeah, like, yeah. oh, I've got one, <clears> see people <throat> on the stage and that's it. And the rest of the time, phone in pocket and just be in the moment. It's much better. Yeah. What is nice, I used to, I went through a stage of, you can get like free prints where it's like 50 free prints, uh, you know, photo prints for every month or whatever. So I used to do that and just print off anything I had in my camera, but it was always pictures of little and. But uh, now all my pictures are on Amazon Photos and I've got fire sticks in every room. Yeah. It obviously uploads. So when the TV's on, but you're not watching it, you've just got the back shot of all the photos. That's on my, not, yeah, I've seen actually, that. Actually, it's nice, a that. bit nicer because you've got like... So from then, like when I went to the zoo with Max and Magda and, you know, all them lot and even that, pictures from that come up and I'm like, oh yeah, that was actually a really good day. So yeah. it is it's, a bit it's, nice. It's in your face, one or isn't two. it? Yeah, yeah, it's in your face and it's a constant reminder then where it's like, yeah, I've got, I go on my phone and it's like, oh, you've got... So all your pictures just upload when you get a new phone and stuff. It's like, oh, you've got 13,000 pictures on your phone. It's yeah. like, oh, well, I'm never going to look through them. Well, really. I went around my parents' house last week and they just bought a fire stick and a new TV. So I was setting it all up from because they don't know how to do anything, mate. Mm. You know, like you've got to press source to change from eight, like HDMI 1 to HDMI 2. Yeah. My mum had to write that down in a book to be like, oh, this is how you get from Sky right. to Amazon. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> so I told her about Amazon Photos, and she said, oh, you do it for me. Literally 13,000 photos, <laughs> and all of them were just screenshots or photos of a book that says, press HDMI. <laughs> like, literally, all of them. And then I couldn't do it, and a phone crashed, and I was like, oh, fuck, I broke everything, because you just screenshot and take photos of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> so we go from us that don't take photos, the younger generation that love to take photos, mm. and then... I guess my mum's generation that loves to take photos of the wall. Yeah, yeah. Just because yeah. it's like, oh, that's a nice shade of magnolia. Mm. Weird. <laughs> Very how, weird. How did we get onto this? I had no idea. Anyway, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? We're, we're fucking half an hour in already. <laughs> <we? laughs> yeah, I'm good, mate. It's been a very quiet week. Really? Yeah, no, since we last recorded, the only thing that I've done fun is pay off a shitload of fines and that's not that fun no I, i've not brought this up on the podcast have i i don't think so i think I, you're too traumatized i'm so mad so <laughs> <clears throat> i don't ever mention this on a podcast but on the way back from spirited away i don't break the law i'm a good boy the whole way to london cruise control mate Mm. Cheap's on the petrol as well. Nice. 70, 50. Ferial speed limit, 70. Roadworks, 50. Roadworks, 50. 70. Roadworks, 50. Nice. Same on the way back, one o'clock in the morning. 70, 50. 70, 50. 70, 50. 500 yards, no roadworks, 40. I missed it, got caught fucking doing 60. <sighs> Immediately, fine. Yeah. Because it's 20 miles over the speed limit. Like, I'm, so- I'm sorry. I'm normally one that's like, dude, you- it's. A speed limit for a reason yeah there's no reason for that to be a 40 oh, tell so me annoying. i'm wrong no there, there was no reason it's a the, five lane motorway yeah and there was no one working no at one all wo- there was no ro- there was no there was no road works because a, a couple like i don't know like i said maybe another 500 yards further down the road 
it, it just went back up to 70. Yeah, it went back up to 70, then went down to 50 because there's roadworks. Yeah. Weird as fuck. It's just so inconsistent. So, I hate the smart motorways. Oh God. So I was a bit annoyed, I'll be honest with you. I was a bit mardy, and then I was waiting for it to come through, and then you have to upload all your details. Then they'll come back to you with what they're going to prosecute you with. So I was expecting a driving um a speed course, awareness course. Speed awareness course. And I was like, fair enough, annoying. It's going to cost me 100 odd quid, whatever. Anyway, because I was doing 20 over the speed limit, it's points. So mm. I was like, oh, for fuck. Right, fuck it. What I thought was a cheap day, because I got the petrol and the tickets. So you like paid for parking and the food and up me up while I was there. So I was like, genuinely a cheap day, really. Yeah. No, 100 quid. Get home on bloody Thursday, mate. Had a nice day. Come to see you at work. Nice and chilled. Got loads of work done. Really productive. Mm. I was going out for the evening. Um, Going out the next day. I was like, this is lovely. Come in. Got a fine because apparently I drove on a low emission zone in fucking London. Ugh. Another hundred bastard pound if I pay in 14 days. If not, it's 200 pound. Fucking hell. So that was the reduced cost as well. That was the well. reduced oh, cost. hundred days. fucking quid. That's so bad. It's a little letter from the mayor of London. At no point did I see a sign no, I that didn't. said ultra low emissions. No. I mean, granted... Because that was on Cock Foster Road. Yeah. And it was backed up, wasn't it, all the way down Cock Foster it Road. It was, yeah. So I don't know whether it's, I wasn't paying attention. No. But then, I'll be honest, because we live where we live. Don't even think about stuff like there that, There is do we? no low emissions zones no, around here. It's not a thing. Yeah. And I've driven to Cock Foster <clears throat> a few times, and obviously it just my car just must not hit it. Hit it. It yeah. must be under the threshold. It's got to be. So obviously, yeah. So that's, oh, that's so annoying. So, so yeah, that's 200. So I've been so mardy this yeah. week. I think that's why I'm not done out as well, because... I've been so skinned. Yeah, I, I was know. like, nah, that is devastating. Yeah, being I, stung twice, definitely. Well, we thought we thought we might that you might have been caught speeding twice, didn't we? Because there was another bit where it was like, and I felt really responsible because it it said sixty, but I was like, there's no cameras here. I know there's no. We're cameras We're turning here. off on the next fucking turn, aren't yeah, we? I and like, I, I was cruising at seventy. Yeah. I was like, don't don't worry, you don't need to slow down because there's no cameras. And then we saw a flash, didn't we? It was like, oh me. no, is that another one? But um, I think it, was a lorry, it must have just been a lorry flashing because touch wood so far, <laughs> nothing's come through. Anyway. Honestly, I'm so cautious driving at the minute. Yeah, because I've never had I've never had like fines and no, I haven't either. I've only been caught speeding twice in like the you know 17 years I've been driving. One of them, right, cheeky bastard. The, it was a <laughs> it was a um, mobile van, mobile van, and he sat just in front of the 40 in a lay-by, so he got me as I was speeding up from the 30 into the 40. Bastard. And I was, like, doing, like, 35 or 36, and I was like, you bastard. Like, I've driven, like, at 30 this whole time, just as I'm literally 10 yards away from the 40, he's got me. And another one I was saying for me, I got done on a a smart motorway, because it's exactly the same, dropped to a 60 for no reason in the middle of the night, all lanes were open, no traffic, and uh, I, I wasn't it. paying attention, yeah. and it just got me. So you're thinking, why? Why would it? Why would I need to be slowing down right now? Yeah. But yeah, mate. What is a smart motorway? So basically, I learned this on my speed awareness course. So they they get they adjust the speed to try and control the flow of traffic. So traffic's always flowing; it doesn't back up, and it reduces the risk of crashes. So if there's like I don't know a crash, like. A junction down, they'll start slowing the the, mo- the traffic beforehand, so it's a safer for the people that have crashed and tries to stop people like just coming to a dead stop. It's things like that that make you think. Did they just change that five hundred yards just to try and make some money? I know. Do you know I, what I mean? Because it was seventy, forty, seventy. Yeah, for 500 I know. Yards, it's like, it's so annoying. Um, <coughs> and I've had it before where it'll come up and it'll say crash, and it'll drop down to a sixty for a junction there'll be no crash and there's no way they've cleared it by then because it's come up flashed up crash just ahead and then you slow down you get there nothing same for roadworks and stuff so i like the i think there's the the, it's I, a smart, the, idea. the smart idea yeah. but in reality they're just a pain in the fucking backside because they don't work you know as technology doesn't always work as yeah. it should do and it's us common people that suffer <laughs> <laughs> exactly and i wouldn't mind like you like say Cruise control, mate. Yeah. Me finding out my car had cruise control was the best thing ever because I'm never going to get caught speeding because I'm out, I'm doing 69 instead of 70, always one mile an hour under. Really? I'll, do, oh, I'll yeah. go two, two over probably. No, one under, mate. Just you can't get caught then, can you? Oh, you can. Bastards. You can. 
Uh, but yeah, other than that, nothing, mate. What about you? What have you done? I've, I've been pretty busy, actually. What have you done? Busy weekend. So I was at an ale festival <gasps> on Friday night. Oh, yeah, you invited me to that and I couldn't come because I have a kid. I know. What a loser. Loser. <laughs> Who's have a kid? <laughs> God. <laughs> I can't wait till you can't come things. <laughs> <laughs> Not long. I know. Um, yeah, so that was nice. It was a, one, a local one in um, just outside Chesterfield, a place called Barrow Hill. Mm-hmm. Barrow Hill. Barrow. Um, and it's at an old um, train turntable station. Oh, yeah. So like, it's now like a museum. So it's, it's a really cool space. Um, and they have this festival it's called the rail ale festival nice all right see what see what they did there i do and um yeah it's really good it runs from like a thursday to a sunday um and they do it every year and they have so many beers <laughs> beers ciders <coughs> from all over the country they get loads of breweries in and there's just probably thousands of beers and obviously like the food on they do um live music and stuff it's really good it's really cool quite Quite a, I don't know, low key event. Do you know what I mean? Because it's ale drinkers yeah, that you're course, primarily yeah, attracting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's um, they're not a rowdy bunch, really, are they? No, like fair. don't get me wrong. There's, there's a bit of atmosphere and stuff, but primarily every time you know, every time we've gone, it's just a case of like you would in a pub, a drinking pub. You go, you sit down, you have a few beers, you chat with people. That's it, dead steady. Everyone's on untapped the app. Just oh yeah, logging well, their beers. I was doing that. I managed, I only managed to check eight new beers in. Okay, but still not bad for not a few bad. hours because obviously yeah, just yeah. Friday evening we went. Um, but it's one of them where you get tokens, you know, like you buy like ten pounds worth of tokens, and then on your t- on your card, it, it's got like you know one pound, two pound, ten p, five p, and whatever. And so you'll go and you pay with that. So you just go up to the bars and you say, "Oh, can I try? I don't know, whatever that is, a trop tropodelic or something." Mm-hmm. And then they'll just scratch it off your card. Um, but normally they you get a glass on arrival, you know, because it's like you take your glass, you have yes, one yes, glass yes. all night, and yeah. you just go take it to the different places. Um, and in the years gone by, they've always given like a half pint, which is perfect because I'd never go to a pub normally and order a half. Yeah. But because you're at a, a, an ale festival, you want to sample as many different ones as of you course, can, so yeah, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Whereas this time they gave you a pint plastic cup, right? Which it, straight away it just doesn't feel as nice as you know, like a nice half pint glass with like the ale logos yeah, on yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like the rail ale so suddenly like a plastic cup just felt a bit cheap and tacky cheap yeah one advantage though because because i went with uh our friend ed so one one advantage was we thought we'll still just order halves because we want to sample as many beers as possible yeah of course yeah um but when you go up and order a half because it's a full pint the staff who are all volunteers very generous of course so you'd always get like three quarters or two thirds of a pint uh for like two quid or 220 or whatever so it was really good um yeah really good night really enjoyable you know it's the ideal sort of got there for about half five close it shut at 11 so you get a nice buzz on tried a load of new beers didn't feel too rough the next day yeah perfect really that is pretty lovely that you're not feeling too rough the next day. I know, because I can't, I can't deal with it anymore. Before you go on to the next thing. Yeah. Something I did today, actually. Uh, I had my first therapy session. Really? Yeah. So um, I have got some therapy sessions. I thought I'd give it a go, you know. Just talk out. Just go through a few issues in this. And uh, it's quite a positive sort of thing. Very nice lady. We're just chatting through, going through you know, history and what's been going on for me and this and the other. And she's like, so do you, you know, do you like use anything when you're feeling like anxiety or feeling down? And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you know, drugs or food or drink. I was like, no, not drugs. I was like, food. I don't eat great, but I don't eat a lot. I don't overeat. I said, drink, not really anymore. And I started talking you know when someone tries to convince someone they're not an alcoholic yeah. and all they do is sound yeah. like a fucking alcoholic? Yeah, and I was yeah. like, so it's not like I need it. But, <sighs> you know, but the problem is, if I have two, I've got to have ten. So <laughs> and I'm just talking and you can just see this woman just scribbling as fast yeah, as she can. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, no. You know how you see in films? Yeah. When they say something and they just start writing in the book. I'm like, what are you writing? It yeah, was like that. Show me what you're writing. And then I was desperately trying to dig myself out of this hole and I just found myself dead centre of earth, mate. Yeah. And I, I just stopped talking. It went silent and she went... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now she thinks I'm a fucking alcoholic. Oh, Sorry, now well. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Accepting it, I'm sure that's the you know first what? step. First maybe. step, exactly. Yeah, it's be you know, 
Well, that sounds good. That's nice and positive. Yeah. Embracing that I'm an alcoholic. That is positive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they, but no, but no, it's serious. Going through your, going to therapy. That's yes, a mate, yeah. nice positive step. It was, it was good. It was a nice little thing. Cause I put in for this in September last year. Is that through GP? Because uh, the waiting list is a, well, yeah, a it's, long, it's, long it's, time. It's all self-referral now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so, it is. Yeah. So self-referred, I asked for face-to-face and <clears throat> I think if you ask, if you want CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, yeah. they will immediately just give you somewhere quite quick. Right. So I, and when they asked, I said, I don't want CBT. I've had CBT before. We've done a lot of work with CBT. Mm. Like it's just not helpful for me. If I'm honest with you, I was like, I could do with something just a bit different, try yeah. something else. It, you know, long waiting list, you know, fucking we're eight months down the line, eight, nine months down the line now, but it is what it is. Got there. <clears throat> I got the link. Sorry, I'm really chesty today. Got the link. And then for about a week, I just kept forgetting. You know when you're like, oh, I'll log on to the computer to do this because it's yeah. pissed around on your phone. And I kept forgetting. And then yesterday, I was like, shit, right, I'm on the computer anyway. I was about to play some Rocket League. I'll get it booked in quick. And they had one for today. So, yeah, nice. on it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so how many sessions do you know did you get? I get eight. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Decent amount. Yeah. So I've not got one for two weeks now because she's on holiday. Right. And I was like, fine, now don't you worry about me, don't you go on your holiday, as long as you're all right. Fucking hell, yeah, I'm fucking... Yeah, yeah, bloody hell. Yeah. People in need over here. Yeah, I'll be drinking me fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Next week when I'm pissed every night, it's your uh, fault. <laughs> bloody Bless hell. Her. But no, it's good, mate, it's good. No, it's good, nice and positive. Carry on with your weekend, I just wanted to tell you that I'm an alky. Um... <laughs> What else did I do? I had family do on the on Saturday as well, which was nice because my oh, uncle yeah. was over from Australia. Lovely. Because we it was at my other uncle's wedding a couple of weeks ago, as it I brought was, up on the podcast. Yeah. So we decided to have our Christmas do. Of course you did. So barbecue in, in the sunshine to celebrate rain. Christmas. Yeah. That was nice. Was it sunny on Saturday? I can't remember. It was, yeah. Lovely. Oh, we, had, we had lovely weather all weekend. Saturday and Sunday. It wasn't great here on Saturday, you know? No? No, we're only an hour up the road. It wasn't great at all. Oh. Sunday was lovely, but no, Saturday, very boring. Yeah. Couldn't even get in the paddling pool, mate. Oh, no. Too cold for paddling pool. I oh, did say nice. when I came round in, I was like, we're going to do the podcast live from the paddling pool tonight. As soon as we can figure out how to record from out there, all we need is long cables and someone to work the machine. Yeah. We can do one in the paddling pool. Easy. It'd be great. That's what we could do with guests. All three pool. of us in the paddling pool. Yes. And we just chat about swimming. Why not? And I don't know. Do you think, I think it instantly put people at ease. I think When it you would, know yeah. you're just like barely clothed with people in water. Yeah, there's a podcast that I see clipped for all the time. There are a lot of like, I don't know, <clears throat> your, your social media famous people. Um, and they do a podcast. And everyone that comes on gets a robe. Right, and they'll wear a robe, and I'm like, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not particularly into them personally, but I like the idea like that, that idea. comes on gets a robe. Yeah, maybe we should do that for our guests. Yeah, well, we feed them. I oh, know they feed us, don't they? Yeah, they have to provide us with snacks. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we nice? We really don't give people much incentive to come on this show. That's do a lot. We? Everyone that's come on so far, kind of most people, we've bought them a takeaway, right? Kennedy. Matt, they got takeaways. Who else have we had on? Drew. He was here anyway. Don't count. Max? Oh, Max is always on. Yeah. Who else we had on? Kyle. Claire. Claire. We must have had a takeaway that night. Must have. Surely. Which time? Mr. and Mrs., the first one. Didn't we go out that night? We did, didn't we? I think we went out, didn't we? Yeah, I don't think we ate. Because if I remember rightly, I was like, fuck, we need to eat something quick. Yeah, we just went out drinking. Yeah, I got pissed. And then come back and sang about grapefruit cake. That was a good time. I've got a great video. I don't take pictures and videos very often, (laughs) but I've got a great one of you. (laughs) In fact, I think Claire took it, so... It was a good song. It was, yeah. You're going to give us a rendition now? Uh, not right now. I think I need at least 12 beers to, to recreate the beauty of grapefruit cake. Maybe we should send it to Megan and Megan can upload it onto the socials. No, because they're not a fart really loud in that <laughs> video. It, yeah, the ground <laughs> shakes. <laughs> you cock your leg and it comes out of your bottom of your trouser leg. It like r- ripples all the way down. <laughs> was a bit gassy that night. Right in front of your wife as well. That's not very nice, is it? <laughs> Your poor wife. I know. <laughs> yeah. But yes, what else you done this weekend? <laughs> Stop going off topic. Um, what else do we do? Uh, started painting the nursery. Yes. Nice. Yep. Yeah. So 
What um, colour scheme we gone for? We've gone for green. We're going for a woodland theme. I like it, yeah. So that's got about half of it done yesterday. Mm-hmm. Claire's finishing off tonight whilst I record with you. So Amazing. So no, she's finishing it? Well, finish, finishing the first coat. Okay. It'll need a second coat, and obviously. It won't need another second coat for at least two days. You've got to give it a day to wear eight. Right, okay. So tomorrow you and me could probably play Helldivers. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. So Claire will probably listen to this tomorrow, obviously, as soon as it comes out, as soon as she wakes up, as she does. Yeah. If she knows anything about decorating, you need to aerate a room that you've just painted for a day before you second coat it. I'm just telling you now, Claire. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's good to know. So to keep you away from it, because I know you're eager yep. to paint it, very to keep eager. you away from very. it, I'm going to have to keep you busy on Eldivers tomorrow. Okay. Just, that's very, very, just for most very of the Very generous of you. You're welcome, Claire. You're welcome. You're going to get slapped. I know. I'm just avoiding a lot of plague. <laughs> so, have we got everything for the nursery yet? Um, No, not yet. What have we got? We need to get a wardrobe. I think we've got a few bits. It's got like, um, my mum's getting the bed. I we've literally got... threw a mama's and papa's wardrobe out about six weeks ago. Oh, that was just in my gallery. <laughs> It's probably the exact one we're after as it well. It probably was as well. It was a fucking expensive kit. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I think we still need, but, you know, there's a lot of stuff to get, apparently. Oh, there's a lot of stuff to get. They're for not such cheap. A t- for such a tiny thing, yeah. they need a lot of stuff. Yeah. I went to go see a friend of mine that works, uh, that I used to work with, and she's had a new baby. So mm. we met up at uh, just around the corners of Carvery. We met up. She had some cake. I had fish and chips. And uh, so I got to meet her new baby, a beautiful little thing. And uh, the whole time, people just kept congratulating me on my baby. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when that though. Yeah. Because she's like, that's gross. No, it's not here. And I'm like, isn't she cute? would not she look just like me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you have the whole world, um, the whole thing of um, people misgendering your baby now as well. Ah, uh, yeah, So of you, you have to make the decision quite early on whether it's going to annoy you or not. Because there is no middle ground on that. There's right. people that don't care yeah. when someone goes, oh, isn't he cute and it's a she or vice versa. Yeah. Or if you're going to get really pissed off by it. You can only be one or the other. Okay, can so you give me an example? So uh, let, let me do it through it. You know, oh, oh, what a cute baby. Isn't he adorable? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, her name's Bobby. Yeah, she's cute. That's not giving a fuck. Right, okay. Giving we'll do- a fuck. Go again. We'll go again. Oh, what a cute baby. He's so cute. He's so adorable. He? He? Do you think I'd dress my baby boy in pink? No, it's quite clearly a she. Her name is Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Sarcastic. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. You can only be one or the other, so you've got to think about I'll think that. about we'll that. I'll, I'll think about Maybe that. Maybe we'll do a poll. We'll let the listeners decide <laughs> how you're going to feel about it. <laughs> yeah, all right. You know how we love a poll on this we podcast. We do, we do. And then never give the answers of the polls to anyone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I wonder what the, I wonder what the best ice lolly is. The best ice lolly is, yeah. <laughs> Megan, what's the best ice lolly? Let us know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fab. It was a feast, wasn't it? It's got to be a feast. I can't beat a feast. I know Ed put in Cornetto for that. And is that an ice lolly? You can't just, I mean, I would accept Cornetto, but you can't just Cornetto it. What flavour? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We're going strawberry. We're going classic vanilla and chocolate. You're getting some nuts on that bad boy. You can't just Cornetto Ed. Come on, man. It's got to be mint. Really? Yeah. A um, mint Cornetto. Mint choc chip. All the way. It's my favourite ice cream flavour. Well, I told you that I got the mint feasts dinner. Yeah. Mate. Fucking little and had the last one the other day <sighs> as well. She went, oh, Daddy, can I have an ice lolly for pudding? So I went, yeah, thinking she'd go for one of the pretty coloured ones like kids do. Yeah. The last mint fab and a uh, fab feast. Didn't realise until it was halfway down her face. Because kids that eat things, they just rub it into the skin. Yeah, yeah. Which is annoying. That is annoying. But anyway. um, Oh, I did do one little thing. I based all of my Warhammer models. You did? I saw you you sent pictures of you sat out in the sunshine. The last two weekends, mate, have been the best. I bought Little and quite a big paddling pool. Bought uh, this. It's out there. You can't see it, but this big swirly snake that you attach to the hose and it fires water out of it. Nice. You go over there and do that. I'm going to sit here. So I made a whole army last weekend in the sun, got so brown. 
Yeah, nice. You know, made sure I put lotion on because I'm not madman. I'm ginger after all. Yeah. You've got, be, you got to be sensible. 5 0, my yeah, friend. I the factor 5 0 when I was in Morocco. You have Skin to. cancer is no joke. It's fucking not, my friend. So get it on. Um, and then this weekend, I based all my models and I did sit out there. So I was like, I might paint a couple of my models. Mm. Then I realized from my old set, so my uh, Thunderstrike Brotherhood fucking thing. Yep. Um, I'd not painted two of the, the models from that. So I've still got two models left from my other army. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get them painted today. It was that hot outside. As soon as the paint touched it, yeah, it just fucking dried. Yeah. I was like, fuck, it was all clumpy and horrible. So I like based it in gold and brought it in because it was starting to look really shit. And also because it was so sunny, I had my sunglasses on. And uh, fucking shadows and it just i couldn't get all to it i won't be able to paint outside yeah, i was really looking forward to it thinking i've got so much to paint yeah summer coming up oh yes baby it's an indoor job i think it is an indoor job i have one of those um lights you know yeah, like a, yeah. like a model light because it just uh, anything without that my eyesight's just not good enough for it well you've seen the lights in here yeah when you put big lights on in here mate blows your fucking retinas out so oh, no. this is perfect for painting my friend um yeah so i'm really looking forward to that because there's a lot of new warhammer stuff coming out there is so that means we're going to spend a lot of money i know it's so typical because we just got into warhammer age of sigmar and we all just bought into it didn't really know anything about it did we when we all started buying it nope. and little did we know that the the latest edition has come to an end and there's a whole new edition with new rules and everything coming out in the summer so all that we, that we've learn and bought and well the models will still be usable but everything we know is changing potentially so i need you to learn it because i still don't know how to play the old one yet well yeah exactly well i've been a chump and learned how to play the old one for no reason like a fucking loser absolutely i've not wasted brain space on that me and max are playing tomorrow and i can't wait because i know for a fact he doesn't know the rules and i haven't got a fucking clue yeah well that means you can play <coughs> use it to your advantage you can just say no well on on a six i just win yeah on a six it says get fucked max <laughs> yeah it literally says that in the rules maybe you should get your rule set and just write that in get pen because because <laughs> those rule sets are irrelevant now anyway i am so looking forward to it though yeah it'd be good fun really looking forward to it i don't still not decide which army to use because i did message him the other day and say what point army have you got max and he ignored me that's classic Max. That, that is Max. Um, so I'm not sure I'm going to use yet, whether I'm because I've only ever used the Thunder fucking Brotherhood Thunder Strike thing or whatever it is. I've only used that once against you, and it got mullered. Mm. Um, but I fucked up. I made the wrong thing, my general, and really didn't play it well. So I don't know whether to use that again or the new one that I've just built but not painted. Mm. Omen and Orange, because that's got some pretty sexy models on it. And very it's got sexy chariot models as well. Yeah, you got some very nice models in there. Mm, interesting. But we'll see tomorrow. I'm sure you get to hear about it next episode. Oh, no, you won't. Because we're recording next episode in a minute. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so, yeah. so, no, in two weeks, you might hear about us uh, yeah. <laughs> playing Warhammer. Yeah. Yeah, because the following week, uh, you're not coming down. So, we're doing two episodes tonight. Mm-hmm. Because are you doing anything special for your week off? I'm you're, a- you're not. You're off, aren't you? I'm off, yeah. Doing anything special? We're just using the time to I do don't nursery. I think and... so. It's one of them because it's half term, so Claire's already off. So it's one of them that's booked in just to um, potter about, do jobs in the house, finish off the nursery. Yeah. Little last little bits because it'll be like, obviously Claire's twenty eight weeks now, so she's quite pregnant. But it's before she is quite pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Before she's like too pregnant to yeah. not be able yeah. to do anything. Uh, so we just figured it'd be nice just to. A, be able to sort bits in the house, and B, just chill. So yeah. I cannot remember the last time I had a week off just at home. It's nice, isn't it? I just need it. Just play play a little bit of Xbox, watch a couple of films, do a couple of jobs around the house, you know, have a couple of naps a day. Oh, fucking love a nap. I love getting up, right, at like, I don't know, let's say nine, having my breakfast, watching a bit of crap on telly, and then having like a little half 10, 11 nap. Yeah. That's unreal. And then you wake up and you still got the full day. Yeah. Knowing Lunch, you could have another nap yeah, yeah, at yeah. like three, four o'clock. Oh, I've never double napped in a day. Oh, ever. I have. You need to. I can't. Game. I can't sleep, can I? Yeah. But even more reason to have a nap. It doesn't work, nap. though. It just doesn't work. I'd love to. If I double napped, it'd just go straight through and I'd sleep for four days. But I can't sleep. Ever. Yeah, your Fitbit <clears> keeps <throat> telling that you can't sleep. Fuck me, man. And the thing is, it's depressing, but I need to wear it to know. 
Yeah. So I'm getting between two and three hours sleep a night since I've had this Fitbit and it's doing my twatting. <laughs> I'm so tired all the time. As soon as I get to bed, I'm like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I've even stopped drinking coffee after 12. Uh, sensible. I've been really good. Yeah. No coffee or energy drinks. Well, I'll say two o'clock definitely. <laughs> But it's normally twelve. But you know, like if I was yeah, there, nothing past four. Nothing. Oh. All right, ten o'clock at night. I'll have one Red Bull. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and some speed. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine because I'll have twelve beers to help me sleep. Yeah, it counteracts it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should we do some snacks? Yeah, I'm getting snacky. Well, I keep looking at this because we've had snacks sent to us. We have after moaning last week. We that got a bit of backlash there because uh, <laughs> by moaning that we didn't have any snacks. Why? My sister quite rightly pointed out yeah. that we've still got a box full of snacks that she sent us. We haven't. We are, I thought we are, well, Yeah, we have. There's only a couple of bits left. Two of them we've done before, so we can't do them again. There's an Advocat, Advocat chocolate bar. Is there? Yeah. And a gross beer for definite. We, I'm sure we've done that beer before. I don't think no, we did. We I don't think we did. We? Um, I mean, I'm happy to do the gross beer. Yeah, just need to do it on a night that's not during the week. Yeah, there's definitely two things in there. There's a chocolate bar and some crisps that we've done before. Yeah. We can't double up. And then my mum said that she'd sent wagon wheels, which she quite rightly did. Oh, that's my fault, is it? Where the fuck is my wagon wheel? Where's my wagon wheel? They got lost. You've eaten the wagon wheels, haven't you? Oh. I don't know where they've gone. They've been misplaced. <laughs> I'm Chitterden. I've gone off so, the wagon trail. I'm so sorry about your son. Thank it, God you've replaced him with me. Next, was, time, <laughs> just give, next time, just give the chocolate straight to me yeah. and I'll make sure it makes it on the podcast. Full pack of wagon wheels. Full, it was a full pack of wagon wheels. Oh yeah, there's like 12 in there. And you ate them all? I ate them all. <laughs> Time, so I, I get... think I ate them whilst we were playing Xbox, and I'm sure I said to you, I'm just going to go get a wagon wheel. You did! They were ours! <laughs> yeah. Fuck's sake, I remember when we got that four-pack of uh, Punk IPA to drink on the podcast as well, and you drank them all. In fact, no, you didn't drink them all. You didn't tell me about them. I get thirsty, right? You didn't even say, oh, we got these, I drank them all. <laughs> you just fucking tried just, to hide it from me. It's easier to deny. But then, I, there I am, mate. I ran out the other day to buy us. Snacks of the weeks, just because I didn't, you know, very lovely that we got some sent in, but I didn't know we were going to. So I went out and bought them, and now you are hiding snacks from me. Let's do snack of the week. We're having a serious conversation <laughs> while Drew sings. We're talking, mate. All right, Drew, sing us in, baby. Here comes Sam and Ryan. Listen to them both speak. They've come for hours all with their pop culture critique. But are you even a nerd if you don't overread? So come on, everybody, it's the snack of the week. And from here on out, that's how it's going to be. You keep doing that, I will slap you, okay? All right. Right, now, please, let's bring it down. Best friends again. <sighs> Tell us about the snack. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this week, we've been treated once again by our lovely manager, Megan. Isn't she the best? She is the best. Because <clears throat> even when she was on holiday... In the US of A. The US of A. Yes. She listened to our needs and our moans and wants and general moaning that no one brings us snacks and brought us snacks all it, the way from the US of A. That is that is amazing. Which I would just like to point out, Megan, thank you so much. But that's kind of what this was to start off with, wasn't it? Trying the weird and wonderful and new things. So if you lovely listeners, if you do go anywhere, just think of your boys when you're in like the little, I don't know, 7-Eleven of whichever country you're in. Mm. Just just a little sorting, sorting that we might not have tried before. Yeah. We'll even pay you for it. Yeah, if so, that's what you want. Yeah, just bring it back. Snack of the week. And the other thing as well is, Megan took an amazing photo of her in San Francisco in a baseball stadium with our logo in the background. It looked outstanding. Do that for us. It looked incredible, didn't it? We want to see how far around the globe our logo can get. Yes. And if we think it's worth it, We'll give you a little prize. Yeah, we'll give you a stick of rock. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I don't have rock. I have lots of prizes in this house, but not, not rocks. Oh, I thought it could be like a reciprocal, you know, they bring us snacks, we give them snacks. We could get some into the podcast rock, surely. All right, that's your job. 
I might defer it to Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Megan! I'm only joking, Megan. I'm only joking. I've been really proactive with the podcast today. You have. Well done. Proud of you. Thank you. It probably won't last. No, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Megan, what did she get us? So, she got us a bag of combos, stuffed snacks, pepperoni the- pizza, baked cracker... <laughs> <laughs> Filling made with real cheese. So they look like little little rolls, like little crispy rolls. They look odd. They look they like do um, look odd. They look like corn dogs. Like mini ones yeah. though. Like with a stuffed filling. I'm gonna open them up. I don't know how big they are. I They feel quite quite tough. Oh they're tiny. Weighty. They're tiny. Are they? Oh they are tiny. They're only little. They are. Oh yeah. Quite hard though. The smell what? of pizza flavored dog treats. You know what? I was going to say dog treats as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm definitely. And get... they, they look like dog treats. Yeah, they do. Like little baked dog treats. They do smell like pepperoni pizza though. Yeah. They just it's weird how much it smells like pe- pepperoni pizza. I'm really looking forward to this. What this is we... new things. I love new things. I know. Me too. Crunchy oven baked crackers loaded with zesty pepperoni and real cheese flavor. Ooh. It's enough to make a pizza maker smile. Ooh. Stuffed full of awesome. Trademarked. I fucking love awesome as well. Big fan. Is that it? Yep, pretty much. Let's get it in our gobs then, shall we? Let's try it. Let's do it. I'm excited. Chin Megan, chin. love you. Oh. I'm not going to masticate this much this week because I've, I think we've lost a lot of listeners. Oh, we really have as well. Mmm. <laughs> so, crunchy outside. A bit softer in the middle. Mmm. Like a paste in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. Quite salty. Oh, very salty. Very salty, yeah. Um... It's kind of like a stuffed pizza crust. Yeah, it is exactly that. Yeah, but, but it's just been left out a little bit, and it's before it's not gone too hard, but it started to get like the next morning. Mm. You know, it's got a crunch to it, but still a little bit soft. Mm. Very dry. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I wish I had a drink. Yeah, me too. Mm. I've drank my drinks. Interesting. They, they're they're very interesting because. They taste like artificial pepperoni. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And an artificial, like, soft cheese flavour. Mm-hmm. I imagine they are. But, I don't know. I think they're very Moorish. Hmm. You're just staring while I talk. Talk us through your thought process, mate. Sorry, I was just reading the nutritional facts. Oh, yeah. So one serving is nine pieces. I've already had 12. Go on. 140 calories per serving. Yeah. 9% of your total fat. 15% of your total saturated. Mm-hmm. Um, 13% of your sodium. Oh, dear. That's the bloody salty taste that we can... <laughs> That's the start. Um, so where... So I don't think you're going to put this very high on the list because you've not dug back in. And you're a digger. I am a digger. I'm. I, you know what? I'm one of these people that with snacks and stuff, if it's not in front of me, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all right. Like I, I don't think I, you know, if I'm walking around the supermarket, I won't go, oh yeah, I'll put that in my soup, in me in my trolley. I'll get that. I'll get a bit of that. Mm-hmm. But if I was like at a party or if I was around someone else or whatever, and it was in, open in front of me, I would not stop eating until they're all gone. Mm. That's, that's my approach to snack. Snack well, these life. These are open. You are at someone else's And house, I'm not. And you're not digging. Digging back in. So well, I don't know what, so that must say that something. That tells you something, doesn't it? So what? So what's our tier system? So top tier. Yeah, love that. Yeah. If I have to. No, I'd have, that, I'd have again. that again. If I have to, dog shit, the worst. It's not the worst. Well, my problem with these are not loving them. Don't dislike them. I I, I would eat that for. But if I was pissed, oh, they're going like down. If we were sat there on a Friday night playing Helldiver. We've had five, six beers. 
I'm smashing this. They want to be paired with a beer. A hundred percent. Couple of beers, mate. I'd smash this whole packet. Yeah, because be they're, they're salty and a bit of flavour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you've had a drink, you just want that natural replenishment. You want to eat shit, don't you, yeah. to replenish. That that would be perfect. Be perfect so pair beer, these uh, like a, you know, if you're having like a few get people around for drinks, they'd be perfect. Sat sat playing Xbox. Yeah, and you're on the sesh. Yeah, they'd be great. But, but just sat around not. sober. I think they're a tier four, aren't they? I think they're a tier four. I agree. If I have to, if I have to, but I reckon, I reckon I'd probably knock these up to a love that if I'd had a few drinks. Reckon I do, yeah. Wow. Because these with a nice IPA, mate. Yeah. Go down beautifully. Very salty with the bitter of the beer. Yeah. I think they fit together perfectly because I'm not good with sweet and beer. I can't have like sweets or chocolate and beer. It just doesn't work for me. No, yeah, I get that. I need salt and beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah so megan thank you very much thank not high on the tier list but this is what we want oh definitely it's nice pulling out a twirl every now and then isn't it but, this but we is know what, what we we're want. getting with that exactly Whereas this is this is new it's fun it's exciting because yeah all right these didn't hit home but look at when we got the jalapeno bloody crisps yeah they ended up top tier and who knew exactly and you guys you guys out there that are buying us our snacks. <laughs> you too can next be, could be the next on the top of our tier list. <laughs> Buy us snacks, please. Yeah. After we've obviously had all them ones that your beautiful sister and mother bought us. We need more wagon wheels, right? That's what Basically, we need. Basically, we need wagon wheels. Your were they jammy? Um, aren't all wagon wheels jammy? No. I can't remember which ones I no, I don't think they were. They were just the the nougat y ones. Ah, okay. Well, replace them with jammy ones and we can talk. Okay. Cool. I'll see what I can do. Where do you get wagon wheels from these days? Are they in, are they in all yes, supermarkets? All still? supermarkets sell wagon wheels, okay. mate. Not as good as the old school ones, but no. they're still there. So we expect them to be in the box of love. Because I've put the because I've bought some bits as well. They'll all go in the box. The box of love. We're gonna start writing names on the snacks. So, we need to we do forget, that, yeah. 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 So fuck us for that. <clears throat> okay, so I think it's time for a word from our sponsor, isn't it? It definitely is. That's you know? right. We have an advert. Yeah, we do. We're like a professional podcast. Are you ready to hear this? <laughs> yes. Into the podcast is brought to you by Stoked and Woke Clothing. The wonderful people at Stoked and Woke are always very aware of the implications that our lives have on our surroundings, and as a result, have created this fabulous brand with an ethos on sustainability. Whether you're after hats and hoodies or t-shirt and shorts, Stoked and Woke have got you covered with clothing made of organic cotton and recycled materials. Each product also comes with an environmental pledge of either planting mangrove trees or funding the collection of ocean-bound plastic, which can be tracked by your very own pledge dashboard you receive after ordering. Head over to www.stokedonworkclothing.com now and don't forget to use discount code into the pod for 15% off. That's www.stokedonworkclothing.com and discount code into the pod for 15% off today. So it cost me, I think it was about 15 grand for the studio time for him to do that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> studio quality advert there from the front of uh, <laughs> Matt Heaton's cab as he was about, as he was waiting for his lorry to be loaded. <laughs> <laughs> just so random. He just sent me it saying, oh, dude, I was bored of this. And I was like, you've saved me so much time every week. Because when we talk, we kind of go off on tangents. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed. I've not noticed it. So we could lose a quarter of an episode every week just trying to get people <laughs> to buy Stoked and Woke clothing. Mm. So, uh, yeah, as Matt said, stokedandwokeclothing.com forward slash into the pod or some shit. Yeah. Promo code into the pod. Not Promo code slash. into the pod. 15% 15 off. 15% off. off. Got mine and you know coming. what? There's a lot of nice, really nice stuff on there. There is. Your family's been all over it, haven't they? Yeah, they have. We've had nine referrals since we got... That's good. Since we've become their brand ambassador. Yeah. Yeah, boy. We need to buy stuff. I have. You said you was going to buy something. Well, I'm really poor this month because I got all these, like, fines. fines. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling someone the other day that I got all these fines, and they went, didn't you drive down there with someone? I went, he ain't paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't driving at 16 or 40. There's there's Lose four it. signs that are clearly red. <laughs> it's dark. It's glowing. All you can see is the red light. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah. Fuck nugget. Not bad. <laughs> anyway, should we talk about some films that we've watched? 
We've not talked about anything this episode, have we, really? We've literally I, spoke about nothing, just absolute bollocks as per usual. Yeah. But it's fine. Yeah, fine. We yeah. both watched a film this week. Nothing over the top, nothing like trending or anything like that. No, just a couple just, of nuggets that yeah, we found because, on the way. Yeah, trying to watch, you know, trying to do the 52 new films every year. I've been really... I've not been slack, but I've not been on it like this year. I've just... I spent a lot of time just watching like comfort films or, you know, comfort TV shows because I've just been busy. Yeah. And um, so I think I'm on, I think I'm on about on track, but every now and then you just need to pick some at random. Um, but how does this one sound? A film. I'm going to give you the synopsis. Go for it. A woman is kidnapped by a stranger on a routine flight, threatened by the potential murder of her father. Ooh. She is pulled into a plot to assist her captor in a political assassination. <gasps> oh my days. That does sound good. Starring uh-huh. Killian Murphy, mm. Rachel McAdams. Oh my God. And Brian Cox. You're not talking about bloody Red Eye, are you? I am talking about Red oh Eye. Oh my God, Red Eye. Have you seen it? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Um, I don't think a lot of people have. No, it's one of these ones that popped. So I follow loads of um, <laughs> pages on Instagram and stuff, and it's just like, oh, I can't believe she said this, whatever, and it's a scene from a movie, all this sort yeah. of things. And that came on about a week ago. Right. So I was like, oh, this looks Rachel McAdams and fucking Killian Murphy. Yeah. Yes, boy. Yeah, so it's one of them I've known about for a long time because it's, a, it's quite an old film now, 2005. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 19 years old. Yeah. Um. And before Killian Murphy really made it big, um, you know, not long out, 28 days later, he's still sort of new on the scene. And, but I was obsessed with him, you know, because I love 28 days later. Yeah. He just turned up in like Batman Begins, a few other things around that time. Um, so it's very much baby face Killian in this, you know, his big blue eyes and his long hair and he's, mm-hmm. You know, he's not as your hard and grizzled guy yeah, yeah, that everyone yeah. associates with Tommy, Tommy Shale Shelby, from yeah, Peaky yeah, Blinders because, yeah. you know, he's still like eight years away from being that. Yeah. Rachel McAdams is obviously very young in it. And it's quite a cool premise, the fact that, you know, she works, Rachel McAdams is the main character. She works for a hotel company. She's like a high up manager and basically like the secretary of state is going to stay at her hotel. She's flying back because she just come from a funeral and Killian Murphy makes friends with her, uh, uh, you know, in the airport um, in the, while they're in the queue. He says, oh, I won't come for a drink. And he's very charming as well. It's a running joke for a long time that you never see Killian Murphy smile ever, yeah, yeah, yeah. ever. He smiles in this film a lot. Really? He's really like, it starts off, the start of this film is actually really good. It starts off quite cleverly. It's more like a, it feels like a rom-com. Like strangers meet in, a, yeah, in yeah, an yeah. airport and like, oh, a chance encounter. And she's he's like, oh, come meet me for a drink. And she changes her mind and like does and walks away and doesn't go and meet him. And then a woman spills a coffee all over her. And she's like, oh, I'm having the worst day. Maybe I will go speak to him. It was to speak mm-hmm. to him and he's charming and they have a good time. They hit off and they're f- flirty and there's a bit of chemistry there. Ooh. And then, you know, they go the separate ways because the boarding calls. Like, All right, yeah, no, have a nice flight. See you later. Nice to meet you. He walks off first. So you think, yeah, he's, he seems like a nice, normal, charming bloke. Why would you let him get away? Oh, yeah. You know, beautiful man. Rom-com, chase him in the airport. Yeah. And then she get, you know, we follow her. She gets onto the flight. She's looking for a seat. Oh, it's over there. It's next to him. No fucking no way. No way. Oh, isn't that lovely? And then it's really, like the start of this film really, I I did really rate it because then suddenly, again, it's a little bit charming, a bit more flirty. Like their interaction's really good, their chemistry. And then he just changes like that when they're in the, on the flight and he's like, basically like, yeah, so she's like, what do you do for a job? He's like, yeah, well, I basically sort out, jo- I do jobs for people and I sort out especially like political stuff, including assassinations, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm on the job right now and I've got your dad and mm. my blokes, my guy's with him. And if you don't do exactly what I tell you, your dad's going to be dead. That's and she's like, seen. she's like, what Stop the Stop being fuck? silly. Stop being silly. He's yeah, like, yeah. nah, I'm not being silly. I'm, I'm being serious. You know, I need you to make a phone call on this flight. And she's like, and that's really good. It's really tense. It's like, what do you do? And some it seems quite grounded in sort of like a thriller thing, like thriller approach. It just, it runs out of steam. 
so to start with, like the first half, or maybe like the first two thirds, because it's not a long film, maybe like an hour twenty, hour half. The it's let down by the final act. The final third, it turns into a bit of a cheesy, um, bit clunky B movie, right? Okay, horror type. You know, he's like chasing after her and she's like throwing things in, he, in the house and he's tripping over them. Oh, and, you know, God. he's just like, oh, he was this really suave, like scary, like guy to yeah, start yeah. with. And you think, fuck, he's going to like kill, like kill a pair, like a dad. And he's like very smooth and he's like clearly professional. And then he's tripping over like hoovers and stuff. And you're like, oh, why? Killian. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's a quite a cool concept. Um, Nice to see Killian and do something different as well. Um, but, yeah, flounders quite a bit. So not one I'd recommend. It was nice to say that I've seen it, but directed by Wes Craven. Really? Horror legend. Oh my God. Yeah, so you'd have thought, you would have thought he'd, I don't know, I guess a lot of our directors have run out of steam towards the end of their career, yeah, you know, because yeah, obviously yeah. He don't, he, you know, very famous for, doing the scream films yes um did he do nightmare on elm street mm, i think he did maybe, nightmare on yeah. elm street you know yeah. the hills of eyes i think he did hills of eyes so he, you know he's like a master of horror over a mm. lot of decades but this was not not one of his better ones That's a shame. Um, with a tight cast as well was rachel mccadams as big back then as well i don't know because i think i don't know if that was in sort of her height back when you know because she most famous for the notebook, would we say? Around yeah. that sort of time. I remember what year that was. So this was like two thousand five. So notebook was two thousand four. So yeah, so she'll have been sort she'll of height huge, of it. She'll yeah. have been massive at that time. Um Yeah, missed opportunity. I, I would give it a solid three out of five. Okay. Two two point seven five out of five. Would you think some of them points come from a good cast? Oh and yeah, nice, and oh. nice to see that cast together. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely. Killian's one of those people that I could probably watch in anything because I feel yeah, like he's yeah, very yeah. talented. But I, I'm, I'm sure I read that he's even come out and said, you know, he's still quite young, quite new. Didn't really, he, you know, a missed opportunity for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. But it's if anyone wants to watch it, I think it's on Netflix. So if you know, it's not a very long film. It's got some good scenes in it. There's a couple of shocks where I was like, oh, wow, that was pretty cool. Um, but overall, generally a bit disappointing. But it was a bit of a nothing film. Yeah. But if anyone wants to watch it, it's on Netflix. So cool. check um, it out there. We love a bit of netty, don't we? Yeah. Nice, easy. We didn't really have to you know, pay much attention to it. Yeah. What about well, you? What have you watched? Very similar, to be fair. Just a nice and easy put it on. I wanted horror, but decided on thriller in the end. So I watched a film from 2021 called I um I Am All Girls. Right. So it's based on a true story, apparently. I don't know anything about the actual story. I didn't look into it because it's quite quite a graphic, nasty uh, subject matter. So I've not looked into to the actual story behind it. So it's set in South Africa. And it's basically about a child trafficking ring. Right. Um, Starts off very bad, like... um some rich guy buying these kids and them getting sold and you know real nasty shit and then i think there's like one young black girl that doesn't get sold um opening screen comes up and then it's this girl older it goes off to the police the police are trying to find this uh trafficking gang um they're getting nowhere with it like it's in south africa it's all very underfunded police as well so you know, the chief is like, <clears throat> if we don't pick something up soon, there is no money. There's no funding for this. We can't keep doing this. We've been looking forever. So to, there's the main cop, this female, and she, he's like, you need to go and do this other case because we need fresh blood on this now. We need, she's obviously quite invested. No, I need this. I need this. Um, He's like, no, here's a, a, a murder. Just go and solve that. Leave this to someone else. The murders then sort of interlink, so they find this body that's been killed, and there's initials carved into his chest, um, and then bit by bit more bodies are found with initials from missing girls from the trafficking ring, and it's all like a big, you know, the typical thriller of how it all interlinks and who's doing what and how um, the killer's trying to guide the police in the right direction, 
but at the same time wants them to be two steps behind so the killer can get their vengeance first. Yeah. Um, very graphic subject matter. So obviously there's a lot about child trafficking. There's a lot of like going to um, like docks with all the big containers and opening them and it's just full of kids and buckets of piss and shit and this sort of stuff like quite a graphic um well i say graphic it's not graphic like you see blood and ed's being blown off but just graphic in that do you know what i mean yeah like it really does not send the imagination into a nice a nice happy place as films go it's okay there's no one particularly um famous in it that i knew in fact even on imdb the majority of the main cast don't have pictures on imdb wow so it's a very underrated film. What's it got? Uh, it's got six out of ten on here. Yeah, I'd probably say that's an average, uh, a, a good score for it. Nothing amazing. Yeah, because of the subject matter, it's dark, and you know I quite like dark anyway. So probably a little bit more up my in my wheelhouse because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the idea of cat and mouse with the police and a killer both after the bad guys but the police after the killer at the same time and the vigilante type type conversation but it's just done in a smaller budget you know like i say set in south africa you can tell it's a smaller budget not big cast uh anything like that worth a go if you like your thrillers it's not going to give you seven vibes it's not going to give yeah. you you know what i mean it's not groundbreaking in the slightest yeah but it's been a while since i watched a good thriller because I watch horror all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's nice to mix it up a bit and do thriller. Yeah, to not have, oh, it was a ghost. Oh, it was a werewolf. Yeah. Oh, do you know what I mean? It's that, a I real totally person agree. getting vengeance on some sick fox, yeah. basically. Yeah, no, I know what you mean, because our quite similar because that's how claire and i end up watching red eye because mm, yeah. we're flicking through like shudder and the horrors and claire's not a big horror fan so we end up on that sort of like happy medium i guess of like a thriller that is exactly the happy medium of i don't want to watch horror well we're, we're, i want it so we're watching thriller yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah similar to like red eye just looked at imdb 6.5 which yeah. is probably about right it's just yeah, a bit, yeah. uh, it's average yeah uh, it's all right yeah so when i was flicking through net netflix the other day so i'm now on 40 yeah nice on my uh film that's film very year. good i must have so i wasn't at mine when we watched this I must have seen four or five films on Netflix that I've seen this year and not wrote in it. Okay. So I need to flick back through my Netflix yeah. and go, what have I watched that I haven't put in it? And they're all... So I think I mentioned a while ago that I got massively into watching documentaries. Yeah. So I think that's when I started missing stuff because I was watching documentaries all the time whilst I was painting Warhammer that I just wasn't putting things in my book because after we had that conversation of do documentaries count if they're an hour and a half or above... I've missed quite a few things. Mm. So I reckon I'm probably only t- seven or eight away from hitting target. Nice. Already. That's good. I think I'm about halfway. I think I'm about 26, which is confident. Isn't... Yeah, I think so. I'm, on, only May, I'm on track. It? It's only May. I've got a week off next week. I'd like to watch, you know, a f- few. <laughs> I go through phases where, like I said, I, cause I, I love my comfort films. Yeah. I, and I'll always go back to them. You know, I'm not, I'm not um, putting film. I'm not always just going to put something weird and wonderful on just for the sake of it. It's like when I drink beer for the app. Sometimes yeah. I just want a nice beer. I don't want to try the weird thing. I want to go back to what I like and yeah, what I know. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same sort of I thing with films. I want a gamma ray. Yeah. 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 Or, Do you know what yeah, I mean? I, I, town, yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, I'm going to have a pint of Guinness because I just fancy it. Yeah. Same with films. It's like, you know what? I just, I like, I love this film. I've not watched this film for years. Let's stick this on because it's great. Yeah. Um. So I'm still doing a lot of that. Um. It's a shame though, because I always feel really guilty now. Now we're doing this, I feel guilty rewatching a film. Yeah, see, even that's... if I love it, it's like ah, oh, yeah, but I should be watching something new. And that's what I don't want to get into the habit of because I love film and films yeah. are comfort for me, and it always has been. That's why I absolutely love them. So I, I just want sometimes I want that. I want to go back and rewatch those films that you know that bring me joy or that I haven't seen for a long time. Or like you know, I don't really remember this, but just because I've seen it before, I don't want to have like exactly like you said that guilt of. I uh, probably shouldn't. I should yeah, try something yeah, yeah. just for the sake of it. But yeah, I'm on a thing. About, I'm 26, so I'm about halfway. Um, I've had a couple of months where I've been all right. I had a really bad month. I think it was last month. I think I only watched two new really? films. But again, I think I was just, I was, I was way on holiday and like that's, you know, sort of like 10 days written off straight away where I've not watched anything. And yeah. But yeah, I think we'll get there. <clears throat> I think next year I might do 
it by month. Like you just said, I do January, see how many I watch in January. That's February. what I've done this month. I can guarantee the first 15 films on here was all done in January. Yeah. First 15 to 20. Because you, cause you start, start the new year, right, I'm going to smash my total this year. And you watch loads and loads and loads and then it just sort of tails off yeah. and then you go through spurts. So yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. This first year I've separated it month by month. Yeah. But you've done a rating system this year, haven't you? I started, I gave up. It's too hard, I think, the rating Up system. to 15, and then I just went, this is bollocks. We've had this conversation on the podcast. It just doesn't work. No. Because as soon as I gave something four stars, I was like, but this isn't as good as that, but it's not. It's, it's way better than this three star. Yeah. It's that, too limiting yeah. of a rating system. Mm-hmm. You'd have to go really. Out of 100. You'd have to, yeah, or, yeah. Or like what they do on IMDb, it's out of 10, but it's in every 0.25. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or whatever it is. So, but, and I'm just like, or no, it's like not every 0.1, I think. Is it? No, it's 0.1. So, yeah, you know, so you get like a 9.2. Six, yeah, it? or a 6.8 or something. Yeah. But then how do you define that? It's so difficult. That's yeah. why I've always stayed clear to the rating system. Yeah, I tried it. It didn't work for me. Obviously, gave it a go because the manager, Megan, and she was doing it. Um, but I just find it too hard. Yeah, and I'm as the soon same. as I got to a point where I was like, well, it's not as good as that. That's four stars, but it's way better than that. The three stars I gave up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So totally. What film was it I gave up on? Horse Girl. <laughs> <laughs> right the film horse girl obviously yeah <laughs> because i was like well this is shit but it's way better than this other three star film that i gave a bit further up which was i can't remember what it was now homeland 2 right <laughs> yeah was like, it's way better than home it's no it is good as homeland 2 but yeah. it's not as shit as yeah so uh, no. up. um right okay so that is the end of the episode my friend and i want to do something a little bit different normally we hand it over to you to give us some beautiful words mm-hmm. but actually you know now we're a professional podcast with sponsors um, I would like to sign us off with some words from our sponsors. So um, thank you very much for listening. Please go over to all of our socials. We are on TikTok now, motherfuckers. Oh, yeah. So get us followed on TikTok, into the pod, Instagram, Facebook, la, 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 all the sort of same stuff, X or Twitter or whatever you call it these days. Only fans, I think we're still on there. I think so. Um, so give us a follow, give us a like. Please subscribe and uh, follow whatever it is on spotify and leave us a review if you haven't yet it is helpful it gets us in more people's ear and that's what this is all about absolutely so if you've got nothing else mate that's it from me right we will leave you with some words from our sponsor peace head over to www.stokeandworkclothing.com now and don't you fucking motherfucker with clothing made of organic materials and recycled you fucking wanker trees or funding the collection of ocean bound plastic which can be tracked by your very own plush pl- you fucking cock end fuck off whether you're after hats and hoodies or t-shirt and shorts so- fuck <laughs>